Hey, Word of Life Church and all of our faithful YouTube friends. We're trying something a little bit different, a uh, different location in the house. The title of today's sermon is We've Been Here Long Enough, and so I've kind of moved from the kitchen into our hallway here, and uh, I don't know if the lighting's okay, but we're going to try it this week. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, uh, we're just going, going to uh, get it right into the Word of God. I trust you've had a good week. Um, we had a bit of a, a lousy day yesterday, lots of rain and just wet, lots of flooding. And uh, well, anyway, we were, every morning it's uh, after a storm. I'm always amazed at uh, how God continues to take care of us and to watch over us. And the cows are all out there chubby and happy. And they've all got a, a thick layer of snow on their back this morning as they're out there chewing their cud. And that's always a good sign. It means that they're actually, uh, they've got enough body fat on them so that they can stay warm even in, in kind of miserable weather. Now, I don't know if I would be out there because I've got lots of body fat, but I don't know if I'd want snow all over my back and I definitely wouldn't be chewing my cud. But anyway, we're gonna get into the Word of God here. Just kind of a little fun fact uh, for my friends John and Greg and those that are fellow Hereford breeders. I just wanna point this out. This is, uh, it's actually called, it's chalkware. It's from the 60s. And uh, it's, uh, I'm just going to take a moment here because we don't do stuff like this, but it's an actual piggy bank. It's never been used and uh, it's, uh, it's quite heavy actually, and I don't want to drop it, but it's a Hereford bull. And I saw one years and years ago and uh, I, I missed buying it. I should have. And uh, anyway, long story short. Uh, last week I was going through an antique store. I love to do that and uh, just antique shop a little bit. And uh, my friend Vern knows. Um, but this was on the shelf. And I was actually so blown away that I saw it on the shelf. I stood there for a few minutes just staring in disbelief. Because it was almost as if, you know, the Lord had led me. That I'd been in that store many, many times. And nothing had like this had come in. And I actually said to the owner, I said... After I had bought it, um, I said uh, I quickly had taken it off the shelf and took it to the owner because didn't want somebody else to get it. And I said, "How long has this been here?" He says, "Oh, we just brought it in this morning." And so it was just a blessing, you know. And, and maybe that sounds weird to you, but to me that was a blessing that God knew I liked things like this, and and uh, I was able to purchase that. So that's just something fun for me. I enjoy that. It'll sit here for years to come. Behind that, or lower than that, here is a. This is an old branding iron. I got that in Tennessee. And uh, and so that's kind of an exciting thing. And so I always try and bring back something uh, when we go away. Uh, and I do love antiques. And so uh, anyhow, um, that sort of was maybe the the thought or, or leading into the thought of this week's sermon. Um, and we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. This over here, a little fun fact too, this is an antique radio, been all restored. The uh, the thrift store, uh, the, the missions thrift store in Port Rowan had it on auction years ago and uh, it works. I've actually never used it, but I was the successful bidder and uh, someone had uh, taken all the time to restore this and so uh, it was a blessing to me. That's um, Bakelite. And that's, uh, it's almost like a plastic, well, it is a hard plastic, but uh, I, I may be not even saying it right, but um, it's actually quite old. I think they said it was from about the 40s. So uh, those are just a few little fun facts of what I like to do. Actually, while I'm at it, one more. Um, this is a J.I. Case uh, thermometer right here behind this glass. And uh, I got that in the States. It, originally, it says Racine, Wisconsin, USA. And, uh, of course, my old tractors, we never own new tractors here in the farm. I've got uh, my favorite tractor of all time is a 730 Case. And uh, it's uh, out in the shed. And we did lots of years of farming, Dad and I, with that. So um, that's a few fun, fun things for me. Maybe if I continue to use this spot, I'll tell you a little bit more of what is in this case here. Anyhow. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I know that you're all just excited to get into the Word of God. Um, and we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 3. Now, one of the things I want you to, to remind you is that, you know, how long did they wander in the desert? You know, the Israelites wandered for 40 years. But we know that that 40 years was actually supposed to be 11 days. But because of the hardness of their heart, they maybe weren't paying attention to God. They were kind of doing things their own way. And eventually God said, you've been here long enough. 
and we're going to look at verse 3 here of Deuteronomy. And uh, it says, Now it came to pass in the fourteenth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and he spoke to them according to what the Lord had given him as his commandments. And after, and it said in verse 4, And after he had killed Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon and Og, king of Bashan, those who dwelt in Astareth and <laughs> Edrei. And on this side of the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying to the Lord our God has spoke today, saying in Horeb, saying to you, you have dwelt here long enough. Now, there's a whole lot of words that I probably didn't pronounce right, but when you're trying to hold the Bible up and read that and kind of be professional here, just work with me on this. But the key there was there was a whole lot of killing and stealing and destroying there, and God said, you have been here long enough. The word Horeb means waste place or your enemy. And sometimes we can get stuck in a, in a, a horrible spot or a place that's like a wasteful spot or a waste place or the enemy of where God wants you to be. And so they said here, God said, you have been here long enough. Now, I remember uh, there was a time when I was really struggling in my mind. I had had, a, you know, just some... some uh, uh, just some guilt and some things that were really, really, um, really taking the steam out of my sails. And I'll never forget this scripture that said, you have been here long enough. And I really believe that as I share this today, that the waste places or the, the things that pull you back or set you back, God wants you to know that he says, you've been here long enough. And, and as we go through the, this whole book of Deuteronomy, it begins to expand on what God wants and where God wants to take us. Remember, the Israelites, they wandered for 40 years, and God said, you should be able to do this in 11 days. And so we know that sometimes our feelings get ahead of us. They stomp us, they kind of cripple us, they pull us back. And God is saying to you today, you've been here long enough. Maybe, maybe yours is, uh, you know, you get it over into worry and fear. Or maybe you're, you're a very critical person. Or maybe you're really struggling with forgiveness. And so you're battling <clears throat> forgiving your neighbor or forgiving yourself. And God wants you to know, he says, today, if that's been a horrible place for you, you've been here long enough and God's got a plan to take you out. And so we need to really begin, The what I wrote down here is begin to plow through your feelings. Plow through the feelings of the flesh and begin to find out what God is saying to you. Now, if you were to fast forward, as Moses was speaking what God had said and what he wanted the people to know, they needed to hear that. You know, the Bible says that we're to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. At times, we can sort of hear lots of things. We can hear all of what the media says. We can hear what the neighbor says. We can hear what the coffee shop says. But you know what? At the end of the day, what really matters is what did God say? What did God say to you? What did God ask you to do? And we know that God is, you know, at, at times, you know, um, you sort of think of the tough situations that you go through in life. It can actually cause you to move forward. It causes you to begin to buck up and say, you know, uh, I'm going to do better. I'll give you a quick little example. Remember, I, I think I mentioned last week, or maybe I didn't even put this on YouTube, but I was painting with Maya at the kitchen counter and Maya looked over at me as we were both painting and she looked down at my stomach and she said, Poppy, you have a lot of goodies in your tummy. And so we kind of got a bit of a chuckle out of that. But then I really began to think, you know, later on, maybe I need to get rid of some of these goodies because I, I want to be around for Maya. I want to be around for her wedding. I want to be around, you know, it's one thing for me to say with long life, God has satisfied me. But if I'm satisfying my flesh, with overeating or indulging in the things that I want, then I can't expect God to begin to carry me or to bring me through. And often his mercy and strength will do that. But as much as that was a funny situation, I heard that. And unfortunately, in more than one occasion in the last week, Maya has made comments about Poppy's tummy having lots of goodies. So she clearly knows and I can use that as a catalyst to move me forward and say, Carl, you have been here long enough. And so I need to begin to use that tough situation or that uncomfortable situation to move me forward. And so that's what I'm going to do. So we see here 40 years journey should have been 11 days, but I don't need to say, well, you know, so I'm going to be 54 this year. 
And I don't need to let 54 years of being a long journey, I can begin to lengthen my journey longer in the sense of living by taking the, the steps that God's putting in front of me. So maybe God will use that tough situation as my granddaughter speaks forth truth. I hear that truth. I register that. And then I begin to walk in that. So where I'm sa- what I'm saying is use the tough situations in your life to propel you forward. You know, sometimes when you go through a, a, a trial or a tribulation or something that's just not comfortable, use that as opportunity to maybe push you into I mean, a little more prayer. Push you into finding those scriptures that are going to talk about what God says about you. Use those to say, you know what, I have been here long enough. I am moving forward. Then, um, you know, we, we, we quote scriptures to say, if, you know, if God be for you, who can be against you? But sometimes we're kind of against ourselves. Sometimes we're against ourselves. It can be through toxic thinking, and you need to say, I've been there long enough. It could be through toxic eating, you know, uh, push away that, that Mars bar, push away that bag of chips or whatever it is and say, you've been here long enough. Maybe it's toxic thinking. Maybe it's toxic talking. See, we don't like that. My mouth gets ahead of me way too quick sometimes. And I feel like I spent a lot of my life sort of backtracking and maybe apologizing for things that I've said or done. The good news is God's very merciful. The good news is most people are merciful. But I could still say I've been there long enough. I want to move forward into what God has. So take those uncomfortable times in your life. Take those uncomfortable experiences in your life and say, you know what? I'm going to let God move me forward. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to step up and step out into what God has for me. Get yourself out of the boat. Stir up that gift that's in you. Don't let it settle. Don't begin. You know, we're long past January 1st. Maybe you had New Year's resolutions. Maybe you had plans. And God is saying to you today, you've been here long enough. Pull up your bootstraps. Use those tough situations to begin to move them out. I want to, you know, there's an old saying, remember the old, was it Tide that said for those tough stains, or shout, I guess, for those tough stains, shout them out. Maybe for those tough situations in your life, begin to shout them out. Declare what God has said to you. Declare what God's word is saying for you and begin to apply it. And then I got to close, but the last thing here is Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. So if you've been somewhere long enough, if you've been on a 40-year journey and God says, let's make it 11, Let's look at verse 6. It says, uh, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, the end of the book here, Moses is saying, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear or be afraid or be dismayed. For the Lord your God goes with you, and he will not leave you or forsake you. Those things in those tough situations in your life begin to declare right now, I will be strong. I will be of good courage. I will not fear because the Lord my God goes with me and he is for me and he is moving out for those things that are against me. And it says, and he said, he will never leave you or forsake you. So if you feel lonely, if you feel lost, if you feel like you've been somewhere long enough, begin to declare today, my Lord God is for me, not against me. He is moving me forward. He will never leave me or forsake me. And I'm going to use these tough situations to begin to shout the word of God at them, step out and say, you know what? I've been in the hole. I've been in the pit. I've been in the quagmire. I've been in the mud long enough in Jesus name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone watching today. Lord, if this word has spoke to them today, Lord, that it would move them forward, go from a 40-year journey to an 11-day journey in Jesus' name. We take authority over toxic thinking and toxic thoughts. Lord, I just ask that this would just really begin to minister to our hearts. And Father, if there's any here today that don't know you, that have never made Jesus Lord and Savior of their lives, Father, that they would recognize, number one, they need a Savior, two, they need to be forgiven, and three, that they would receive you right now. Pray with me if you would. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash my sin away. Give me a brand new day, for I want to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Remember, you've been here long enough. Let's step forward, and we'll talk about good things next week. Amen? Stay safe.